Let's take a coffee break. What is up, Wichita? We are back for the very first episode of 2023. I am Officer Chad Ditch with the Public Information Unit, and I'm here with my awesome co-host, Officer Trevor Macy. Man. Also, with you threw me off with the awesome. You know, you're like, wow, awesome, bro. Just, I just want you to know that. Thank you. Know? you. I appreciate new year, that. New me. Wow. You know? <laughs> That's very nice. Do you have a uh, New Year's resolution? No, I just want to hold myself more accountable. Mm. So uh, went to went to church yesterday, and, and and that was part of the the word that was given. So um, just holding myself and and having somebody hold me more accountable for things. So yeah, um, got up at six twenty this morning. Uh, wife was already up making breakfast and stuff, but I was up ready to go mm. by seven fifteen. There you go. So and usually it's not that way. <laughs> yeah, usually it's like I'm no, dragging. It's hard. it's hard. Yeah, especially on a Monday. Right. How about you? Uh, mine is really just trying to eat better and then increase my cardio okay. during my workouts. So I've been running a lot more lately, yeah. running a couple miles every time I work out. So. On the treadmill or outside? Just on the treadmill right now. It's too cold outside. That's true. I don't like to... If I jog and it's like too cold out, like my lungs start to burn. Yeah. Like get that cold air in there and just... Do you like to... Like jog outside even when it's warm? I don't like to jog, period. Oh, there. I, so this I is this is a whole new thing yeah. for me, but I've gotten up... I've slowly geared up so i'm at like two miles now i'm gonna try to do three miles mm -hmm. this week and then stick with like three miles to like my max dude that's what i'm gonna do i remember in the military one day we ran six and a half miles yeah no thanks. longest day of my life no, and longest morning of my life no thanks legs felt like jello i was doing the zab judah noodle legs like yeah it's just all over the place. Like, how do you go out? how do you go on after that yeah you know? But bro, how's how's the month, man? This is we we haven't done a podcast in two weeks. It's just been yeah so busy. It has um, been busy. We just haven't had any kind of time to do that. So yeah, the year's been off to a busy start. Yeah, um, you know we've got a lot of big things coming up, mm -hmm. big things that we're planning. Yeah, um, new chief is is definitely um, gearing up to to do some stuff. So we're just yeah we've been busy in the in so, the unit. So he's been here since Thanksgiving. Yeah. At what point do we quit saying new chief? That's that's interesting you, know? you ask that. Because at what point do we stop saying new year too? I mean, that's like true, happy new yeah. year, obviously. Is it new in Year's January Day. for New Year's? I, I feel like like after the first week, yeah. it's just like it's just old news. It's just the year. Yeah. Like happy year. That's, or that's, whatever. I don't know though. That's very valid. If you if you uh, if you know the answer, you can always they can comment. Because <laughs> yeah. we love comments. We do. We do. Um, or email us at policeweb yeah. at wichita.gov. But uh, yeah, did you have a uh, you have a good New Year's celebration? I just realized we haven't we haven't talked since, talked since we, like have, we haven't had Christmas. a podcast since yeah. So. Um, yeah, New Year's. I worked I worked part time. New Year's Eve came home. Um, my family had already had like little snacks and stuff already made. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, just hung out, celebrated. Nice. Man, bro, it's because we're on the what today's the 23rd. Today's 23rd, Monday after the 23 weekend, three days into the year. Yeah, um, and that feels like six months ago, you know. The that, new year, yeah, bro, it's been a yeah. very busy first couple of weeks, but yeah. but it's also like flown by, yeah. And it, it's crazy how you can say that, right? Isn't that like a is that an oxymoron? Is that what that is? Flying by, how uh, it's, it's it seems so long, ago, but it, no, that uh, oh, that it's it, it seems, seems so long ago, ago but, but it's gone by. so fast, yeah. yeah, that's a little bit of an oxymoron, okay, yeah, See? like uh, uh, like a big shrimp, yes, a big shrimp, yes. yeah, or a little giant, that's true, or a tall guy that they call smalls, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. But yeah, bro, it's been busy, but I, I like being busy because then you get a lot of stuff accomplished and you feel accomplished and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been it's been pretty cool. So yeah, uh, got a new academy class getting ready to start. We just had one graduate at the end of December. Mm -hmm. So um, looking forward Excited. to that. Yeah. So got a meeting today. Big meeting. Excited. Excited, Excited to see. Wait, we're going to announce that later. Yeah. It's on the hush hush. Yes. Right now. So but a big project coming up. Yes. And I can't wait. Can't wait to, to see the outcome of that. So I'm it's cool. going to be neat. You know what else I'm excited about? My Chiefs. Five years in a row, bro. AFC Championship game. We're going to it. Very cool. Yeah, man. I'm happy for you guys. Yeah. So it's going to be cool, man. Going up against the Bengals. Lost three mm -hmm. straight to them. Um, Mahomes got hurt. That scared me. Yeah. But uh, our backup quarterback, you know who he is? Chad Henney, they say with, with him, anything is possible. Mm. So 
I'm excited. I'm gonna need you to be a little bit more amped up, man. This is football. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I don't. My, my team is is no longer relevant. So I mean, I'm just like I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't have anything. I don't have a dog in this race, Chad. Yeah. So I just you know good for you guys. I'm yeah. happy for you guys. Respect to the Chiefs, Mahomes, everything. Yeah. I watched the first quarter of the game on Saturday while yeah. I was at the mall. Um, so they're playing well. Yeah. So we'll see what that. We'll see what happens with the Bengals. I'm excited. I'm excited. We'll see you. You know what else I'm excited about? Our guest today. Our guest. Because uh, I've had the pleasure of having some academy classmates. Well, I think he'll be my first academy classmate that I've had on here, I believe. So if I forgot someone, my bad, y'all. Uh, but my academy FTO was on here. So uh, That's true. Officer Luke Brottle is here on the show okay. today. He is going to be leading the um, next recruits coming into the Wichita Police Department. Today's so, our first day, right? Uh, yeah, I think so they're going through orientation. orientation right now. Yeah, so very cool. Uh, he's gonna be here. Um, really good dude. Uh, we both started the uh, academy later on in life. You know, most kids, most people come out here in twenty one, twenty two, and stuff. Luke and I were in our thirties, or yeah. I just hit my thirties when uh, we started. So, um, great dude, man, knowledgeable. But enough me talking about him. Let's let Luke talk about him. Let's get him on here. <laughs> we'll take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back. And we are back with Officer Luke Brado. How you doing today, man? I'm great. How are you? Uh, good, good. Trevor, you? I'm good. Yeah. So we good, ended. For asking. Well, let me start it off like we normally start off. This is the first uh, podcast since we came back for the new year and stuff. Oh, so. fantastic. Yeah. So you're welcome. First of 2023. I am honored to be here. You are special today. Yeah, you're special, special every day. But So we asked the same question to the first guest, so uh, we will not be offended. But have you seen the podcast? I have seen clips. Okay. But I have not I cannot say that I've watched one all the way through. Hey, that's good. I can I can it's take okay. that. Yeah. yeah. So clips is fine. We started this last year, April of last year, and what it was for is to let the community know who the person is behind the badge, not just, you know, Officer Macy. Um that's how he talks. And um, <laughs> so, um, so uh it's all that T V training. Right. Mm-hmm. So tell us, man, who's who's Luke Brottle? Well, uh as you know, mm-hmm been on the department this is what we're entering our eighth year yeah we were uh, academy classmates yes officer ditch was my class president believe oh, it or wow. not yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. Yeah, i heard you gave a really good speech it was he funny. did and i think he was i think he ran unopposed but i can't remember yeah <laughs> <laughs> so entering my seventh year um until recently all of that has been on nights mm-hmm. fourth watch north patrol there you go i miss it yeah. Just desperately. Yeah. That nighttime, um, sleeping during the day. Yeah, it was... That sucked. Yeah. But I miss the people. I miss the work. Right. Uh, so I just started at the training center. Yes. The new Academy FTO. Um, other than that, married. Okay. Three kids. Okay. Um, we've been married for 13, going on 14 years this year. There you go. I think. I don't know. i got to do the math on that. Right. That sounds about hey, right. Hey, at least you're in the ballpark, right? I'm close. I'm within yeah. a year or two, <laughs> plus or minus. Hopefully my wife will... Forgive right. me. I'm sure she will. Um, but that's about it. Um, like I said, three kids anymore. If I'm not at work, I feel like I'm either picking somebody up or taking somebody to a practice, a concert, okay, a game. Something. That's where you're I'm at. I am a taxi age driver. Groups, yeah. yeah, ten, ten, and twelve. Hey, you got all your hair, so that's good. I got a little cul-de-sac <laughs> brewing right here. <laughs> <You> <laughs> so. Man, well, that's that's good, man. It's, it seems like you're super busy. You know, we ended the podcast last year with two recruits getting ready to graduate. And oh, we'll start, fantastic. Yeah, so we're starting this one with the FTO who's going to lead the, mm-hmm. the next generation, I mm-hmm. guess, of, of officers and stuff. So what's your mindset with that? This is You're, you're already a field training officer for the department, but now yes. you're going to be a field training officer for the academy. Yes. Tell us what, what's your mindset like that going um, on. You know, it's one thing that I've told a lot of officers who will uh, – complaints too harsh of a word yeah. but have some wishes that different things were done mm. or how should i say that things were done differently in training yeah and what i say is you know if you're going to be a complainer you need to be part of the solution right yeah. and so i kind of have to put my money where my mouth is yeah. on that one um just want to do what i can um i would you know i'd be lying if i told you i thought i was the best police officer that they could be um I think we all have made some mistakes from time to time. Yeah. Um, but we learn from them and grow from them, and that's kind of the best thing to do as a, a teacher or a mm. trainer in this case. Um, 
help other people learn from your mistakes yeah. so that um, they don't make the same ones. Mm -hmm. And just to, I feel like everybody, every FTO kind of puts their own little uh, spin on it, uh, yeah. molds, recruits in a different mm -hmm. way, and I'm, I'm excited to add mine to it. Uh, we have a smaller class yeah. than we've had, I think, ever. Yeah. Um, so I, th I look at that as an opportunity. Yes. Uh, more, I'm saying uh, a lot. More opportunities to be with the with the recruits, mm -hmm. to be with them, and just to kind of teach them. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I've learned a lot from senior officers, uh, mm -hmm. even from younger officers at times. Right. And then I've had I've been lucky to work for some great cops yeah. as my supervisors, and just to be able to work alongside some living legends. I saw you had Bachman on the podcast. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. Dirty Harry. We so did. Yeah. getting to share, uh, you know, he and I shared a beat. Mm -hmm. He was first shift. I was fourth shift. So he took over when I came in. Yeah. And so just getting to... By share, do you mean he told you what to do and you said yes, That sir? is exactly <laughs> what happened. <laughs> exactly. That is exactly what happened. Yeah, that's what you do though, right? As yeah. a rookie cop and stuff, you learn from the senior officers and stuff. You know, I didn't speak for the first year of my career. I I, it, yeah. I sat in the front row, mm -hmm. and you remember that I, I wasn't yeah. exactly boisterous in the academy right. either. Uh, I sat in the front row, kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. We were really senior on nights back then, so yeah. it took a while for me to not be a low man on the totem pole. Yeah, right. so you know, and you're right though. Looking back, like that's what it was like for for me as well, because I started out west. You you've been up north the whole time, um, but I went west southeast and. Even those first two years, it was always, you had a lot of senior officers, mm -hmm. I'm talking 10, 15 years and mm -hmm. stuff, but now that switch has happened yeah. where people are going to day shift, you know, families yeah. and stuff. And good for them. Yeah, yeah. They absolutely. deserve it. Yeah. But it's, it's nice when we have that, some senior leadership on nights and stuff to help out with, because some calls are, are crazy, right? You might have, oh, yeah. you know, um, a domestic violence with some mental health, with uh, an arson, with, you know, all kinds of things. You never know. Um, exactly. Especially if it's a full moon out, you know. So you know what? I thought people were lying about the whole full moon thing. No, but it's so oh, true. It's a thing. Yeah. It's yeah. so true. Yeah, it's one hundred percent the truth. Yep. Um, and it don't matter what side of town you're on, so right. either. So, um, but yeah, bro, field training officer. So what? What made you do that? I mean, when I when you and I came into the academy class, we were kind of the older ones in the group. Yes, we right? were. We had yep. a couple that were a little older, but we were we were pretty up there. Um, what's what's it like, or why did you choose to go down that path? Well, like I said earlier, um, if you ever have a complaint or you think something's a problem, if you're not doing anything in, about it to fix it, then you're just as much a part of the problem. And not that I, th and that's not to say we have a, a large problem with training. I don't right. think we do. Yeah. But um, there's always certain things when a rookie comes out. Oh well, why don't you know how to write this report better, or why don't you know yeah. your geography better? Those are yeah. the big complaints all the right. time. Right. Uh, so that was my mo initial motivation. Is if, mm. If not me, somebody else is going to do it, and it may sound a little overconfident, but I don't. I feel like I can train yeah. our class, our, our upcoming class, as good as anybody. Yeah, um, it's thinks it's weird too because it's like you know we still and then, and you could tell it's it's how you're maybe thinking and how I think um, is even at seven and a half years on, <laughs> we don't feel like we know we know everything, right? Yeah, we still feel like not. rookies compared to everybody. So now that we are stepping into this role as the senior people mm -hmm. on some calls or some you know field training officer of the mm -hmm. academy, we don't feel like. We're the one that should be here, but at the same time, we feel like we're qualified to be here. Yes, and and I think you are definitely one of the people that are qualified to be there. And well, thank you. To, yeah, anytime, bro. Um, to be able to bring that change and just a new outlook. I mean, that's all. Mm -hmm. that, all it is is to bring a new outlook. And um, like you said you've been there. You're a dad. I think that that brings something different too. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm excited, bro. I'm excited to see the change you put into these people's lives. I. That's kind of my thing. I I, I told. I told some of the recruits today when I met with them for the very first time, you know, the fact is, is that we have about a 25% attrition rate in the academy. Yeah. Uh, about 25% don't make it for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I, yeah. I have a lot of respect for people who realize that this isn't for them. Because, yeah. Because right. um, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. what, what the lieutenant told me the other day was many are called, few are chosen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I would hope that we get all thirteen through. Yeah, yeah, I would love to set that record as I'm the first one, right, to actually pass an entire class yeah. and, and be worthy of yeah. passing the entire right. class. I don't want to pass somebody for, for just numbers' sake. I want yeah. to put out the best officers that we can, mm -hmm. and that's that's why I took the spot. I'm excited about it. Uh, I've always had somewhat of a teacher's heart. Mm -hmm. I have come from a long line of teachers in my family. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, it was always kind of a joke. 
my grandfather was Mr. Brottle. He was an English teacher here in <laughs> USD 259. Okay. I grew up, my dad was a preacher, so he was Reverend Brottle. Yeah. And I kind of had to, like, man, I got to have my own title. I can't be Mr. Okay. or Reverend. Right. And so here I am, officer, I guess. Yeah, Field right. training officer. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So You could have been president. I guess I took that from you, my bad. No, well, it's okay. I was a squad leader. President you were a squad leader, squad yeah. Leader and the whole Brottle. time, too, right? No, I was a replacement, actually. Oh, that's right. My bad. See. My, uh, my squad leader was relieved of his duties. Oh, mm. it, it happens. happens. Jinx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so... Um, anywhere else that you've been on the department and stuff in seven and a half years? I know you've been north, but any other specialty units? Yes. Yeah, so, like I said, North Patrol, my whole career mm-hmm. on Fourth Watch, which I've loved. I would never have changed that. I think there's something to seeing other parts of the city. Yeah. But I have loved Northside. I have loved the people of Northside. And I don't mean the officers, I mean yeah. the actual citizens of Northside. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, the beat I worked was 44 beat, which was geographically the smallest beat in the city. Okay. So that meant that it was one of the busier beats in the city. Right, yeah. And just coming in contact with all sorts of different folks. Yeah. Just every day was different. So I wouldn't have changed that for the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I also recently, I guess not recent, it's been two years. I'm on the crisis negotiations team. It's been two years already? Yeah. That's awesome. uh, just coming up on two years yeah. Yeah, since I took my FBI training. Yeah. So the crisis negotiations team, we used to be called hostage negotiators, SWAT mm-hmm. negotiators. We've now been utilized in a lot of different areas, so we're called crisis negotiators yeah. uh, just based on the needs of the department. Uh, a lot of people in mental health crisis, mm-hmm. not necessarily a criminal incident, but um, we go through a little, quite a bit of training. Yeah. The FBI gives us 40 hours of training, and then we do on our own. Yeah, quite a bit every every year. So that's, that's cool. been my my main experience, and then uh, of course a, a field training officer. I've done that since 2019 in the yeah. field, and then just now stepping up to the training academy. Yeah, and I'll have a six month stint there, and then uh, go on elsewhere. I think the crisis negotiation thing. That's just one thing I love about law enforcement, especially this department. Man, is like there's so many different tools that mm-hmm. we can put on our tool belt. Oh yeah, and to add crisis negotiator to that. I mean, if anybody's taking that training out there, it's phenomenal. Um, it not only helps you as law enforcement, but man, it can help me solve an argument with my wife so quickly. Man, like just see, and then so then she picks up. Stop using that stuff on me, Chad. I know what you're doing. That's you know? what my wife does all the time. And she. She's very interested in what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's never come from a ride along. Yeah, okay. she doesn't want to know how the sausage is made, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Just like you know what, out of sight, out of mind. You do you. Yeah. But uh, she, I don't know if I ever told you this, but she helped me study in the academy. Yeah. Okay. I made flashcards of everything. Yeah. And she would. That's quiz a great me. spouse. She she was she was yeah. a great is a great yeah, spouse. Is, yeah, but sorry. then also she was very interested in the material that came through crisis negotiation. Yeah. And how all that worked. And so she recognizes uh, she active rec- listening skills. Is yeah, what we call right. it. She recognizes more. She pies. recognizes that, and she goes, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, you right. better not stop." But I will tell you, it's helped me with my kids. Right. Uh, yeah. My children are what they call themselves tweens. Okay. Yeah. They are not. They they claim no longer to be children. Yes. But they're not teenagers anymore. So right. Tweens. Mm-hmm. That it, ten apparently, or twelve. Yeah. Apparently, it's a new word. I don't know. No. Yeah. We didn't have that back in my day. Yeah. Yeah. I had to figure it out because I didn't want to say when my son was twelve. I was like, <laughs> what? And I had to Google, and it was that's what's so many tweens. Yeah. But you know, a lot of changing emotions and yes. being able to to talk to them. Yeah. In using my crisis negotiation yeah. skills has stopped so, a lot of fights. See. And do you ever realize, like, at that age with kids, and it might not be your kids, but I can tell you one thing, it's my kids, it's my kids, um, that they become a little bit more dramatic with, (laughs) with, like, sicknesses and stuff. I tell this story all the time, man. One one day, my daughter, after she plays softball, and after, like, a hard softball weekend worth, like, nine or ten games that are played, um, she really does not want to practice on Monday, right? Sure. So, Sunday night, she's like, oh, my ankle really really hurting and and mom is of course gonna want to um console her on that and stuff so monday morning comes she's like dad my ankle's still hurting and i'm like yeah you, you'll be all right <laughs> and then monday afternoon after school she's like in tears my ankle's so hurt it's still hurting so mom says okay no practice well then like an hour later she's limping on the other foot and i'm like she forgot mm. yeah she <laughs> forgot so it's because now everything's woosawed and she's calmed down yeah, but that's yeah funny. kids can be dramatic so it can be but yeah just a bit so speaking of kids, um, and I know you saw bits and pieces of this podcast, but we play a game on this podcast called okay. One Has to Go. Okay? okay. Being that you're a dad, I'm sure you've seen lots of movies and stuff that are like Disney or just kid-friendly movies sure, and sure. stuff. So we took this one back to the 90s and up to date. So these are four movies. One's got to go forever. Okay. Okay. You got Lion King, Matilda, 
Toy Story, Toy Story 2, whatever Toy Story, or The Goonies. Which one are you going to get rid of forever? Never existed. Well, I'll be honest. I've never seen Matilda, so that's easy. I, that, I'm are you with, serious? I've done with that one. Wow. Yep. You've never seen Matilda? I've heard that it's a thing, but I've, I've never seen it. I'm going to need to talk to Reverend Brottle about this situation <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, you're, that's something. You should have seen every kids have seen it. That's a pretty good movie. I, the, that scared me. Though, are there I'm songs kidding. in it? Because they said... There's there a new one just new, came out on Netflix. Yeah. That's this, a musical. This is the Danny DeVito okay. one. This okay. one terrified me as a child. Well, I've not seen Ooh. either. Yeah. It's I, I'm ride or die with Goonies, though. Oh, yeah. That's my A1 since day one. See? I like that. I like that. I can't remember. We had somebody on the podcast that never seen Goonies. Oh. I can't remember who it was. I'll probably get rid of Matilda, too. Really? Just because just I can't get rid of Lion King, Toy Story, or the Goonies. See, yeah, I, I like classic. all of them, yeah. but yes. Matilda's the one that I could go the longest without watching. Really? You know what I mean? Because I haven't seen, no, I haven't I don't seen know Matilda. What I haven't seen Matilda in years. Yeah. And I've seen all the others. Like these are rewatches, like regular rewatches. Yeah. Like Lion King, classic. Toy Story, classic. Oh Goonies, yeah. classic. If if either of those are on TV, I'm gonna stop and watch. Stop them. and watch. You're gonna stop and watch Toy Story. Yeah, You're absolutely. A liar. You're a liar. You don't think I will? I don't. I don't. Well, <laughs> I don't know how to <laughs> prove that. <laughs> I will. Here's a real question, though. Have you seen Star Wars? Of course, I've seen Star okay. Wars. Chad, Chad's never seen it. I have not seen uh, Andor, so don't. I just started. Don't give me any spoilers night. on that. It's for, it's pretty good so far. I don't like it at all. It's just you know. Well, I, we don't like you. <laughs> That's not true. I do, but <laughs> boom. I, I just I do. But. I never I never really got in the movies or shows that were like extremely unrealistic. So to me, the galaxy far, far away. But it. But I'm also. Like I, I don't if if you can't tell, um, I don't like to read. Um, so like, uh, <laughs> so is it the opening crawl that just it, turned it, you it off just, from it? it? You just, just you didn't want to like, read that much. I go down different routes and I'm just like not paying attention. And before I know it, I'm like, how did I get to this exit on the highway? Kind of thing, you know. So mm. that's just how I am. For like, like speak like, why do we call fiction and nonfiction? Why that really always bugs me. I think we talked about it on the podcast before. Like, it's just always been how it is. Yeah, I always got confused. Like nonfiction. Well, fiction comes from the latin uh, i'm just kidding oh, I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> probably like victory like, or something like i always had to remember fiction what would you guys fake? have done if i would have come up with something really like, really would have believed like you. so like I would have fictitious believed is fake yeah. yeah it's fiction yeah so that's uh-huh. that's where it is so i want to ask you though do you think you guys would have chosen him to be your class president if you had known he hadn't seen star wars <laughs> Like, would that have factored into that decision? Because it was well, I'm going to look back through. It was me and Saint Vrain. We we had the we were the ones that were going up for class president. Oh, so you didn't run in a post? I did not. Oh, okay. No. Surely Saint Vrain. They made us do Star a, uh, Wars. Henderson made us do a, a video or do a presentation to the class. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember that yeah. now. I st- <sighs> going back and looking at my class. I, no offense to any of us that are still here, but I don't know who else would have really been able to do it. Yeah, same Frank would have done good. He's still here, but hmm. I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> so the deal about St. Vrain is I don't I don't know how many people know this. He worked for me when he was in college. Really? Yeah, in another life. Yeah, we had, we had another job, and I was his boss. No job. Wow. Yeah, I think so you I said that, and I just forgot I, uh, about it. I, I was still looking him back as that that employee, twenty one year old kid that walked um, through the door. That's that's, that's hilarious. Funny. Yeah. So dude, there's like. We started with, I think, 21 or 19, something like that. And there's 10 of us left in our academy class. That's crazy. Yeah. It's just. But then I look at like people like uh, some of our deputy chiefs or, or captains and stuff that have been on the department for 25 plus years. And they still have like two or three, which is. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just know that. So mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll people see. We'll find other opportunities. I was going to say not to put you on the spot, but are you, are you going to, are you a lifer? Yeah. You going to get 30 years in? I don't know about 30 because I started at 30. So I know. I'm that's not, my problem, too. Yeah. I was 35 when we graduated the academy. Yeah. See, I was I just, yeah, I turned 30 at the beginning of the academy. So um, I don't know. I'll probably make it to 50 or 55. It just depends. So, But I'm also at that stage in the career where you, like, start thinking about other things afterwards and try to build that legacy and stuff. Mm-hmm. Or, so that way when you punch out here, you're not like, what do I do next? Because I don't want that. Right. But I think that's the important yeah. thing to... Just knowing you a little bit, mm-hmm. having a life outside of this, yeah, mm-hmm. and that's going back to the training. That's what I try to impress upon yeah. all of the recruits because you know you get some of these officers that come through here, and being a cop is all that they have, oh, right. Right. Or, 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 all that they have to their identity. Like, yeah, it defines them. It's yeah. You know, 
Because it's still hard, though. Look, man, it's still hard. I'll be walking around Walmart or some other place in the city, and I'm like, hey, man, I know that guy over there. He's been, he's a absconder, <laughs> and I need to get <laughs> right. Like, he's absconded from prison, and we need to get this guy back in, in custody. And my wife's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. Just, just okay. And, you know, the blinders sometimes got to be put on or something. If it's that mm-hmm. serious, obviously, you're going to do something. But, right. Um, but yeah, you're right. For the mental health side of it, we talked about it before, but um, the mental health side, just to have something outside of this and stuff is, is extremely important. Yeah. You need that woo-saw. And, oh, um, yeah. So You know, I've actually, it, people laugh at me when I say this, but I worked in sales for like 15 years before I started mm-hmm. this job. This job was way less stressful. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm the I, same way. Yeah. I went through, it's like, I would think about my quotas and my numbers right. all night, every night, yeah. on weekends. On, and, you know, I, go, I take a vacation day. Yeah. And I think, oh, how much money did I lose today? Because I wasn't there to make whatever sale yeah. I needed mm-hmm. to. And then here, I unplug, I unplug. Yeah. yeah. People are, did you hear about this that happened? No. No. I, I sure didn't. didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't have an email on my phone. I don't, I, when I'll go home, I can go home, I can woosah and, and things. But yes. Yeah. Totally get that. Mm. And then I became a public information officer, and then the, the stress went back <laughs> yeah, up. Never, 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 you, never, I was going to say, you don't have an off time now, do you? Yeah, yeah. Well, we do, hopefully, on, on for three weeks at a time. But Are you um, guys on? Are you, so does one so of you on call every, all yeah. 24 yeah. hours? So I'm on call right now for this week. Mm-hmm. And then do you take over Friday? Yeah, I take over Friday. Yeah. And then it'll be you, and then Juan, and yep. then and we rotate. But for us, it's almost like, uh, you know, it's taking care of the day-to-day and then also thinking about um, upcoming projects and stuff, mm-hmm. getting information out there. You know, you're kind of mm-hmm. like um, making sure that we highlight the department and everything and all, sure. all the great work the officers do. Um, so, like, that's constantly moving and stuff. And it's just like, I remember that day when I worried about why my beat buddy didn't cover his that call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I miss those days. Yeah. So, if you're out there stressing days. about that, just know there could be more stress. But, yes. uh, but yeah, man. I know you're busy, man. I appreciate you taking the time coming out here. I um, appreciate the invitation. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, thank it you. It was fun. And then hopefully we'll, uh, here in six months, we'll get some of your recruits to come out there and come out and we'll, we'll come out to you and Absolutely. talk about it. So, yeah, I'm excited. Absolutely. So awesome. until then, man, we're going to get a refill and uh, we'll be right back. Well, that was Luke. That was. Yeah. I didn't. I, I knew he would probably be a Star Wars fan. Yeah. So I, I don't understand how you can continually have these people come on the podcast yeah. and tell you that Star Wars is good. Yeah. Or, or reaffirm that it's good. And then you still refuse well, it, it. it's it's you know it, as a, a thirty seven year old um, in this life uh, and being a dad, I, I always teach my kids that um, never ever succumb to peer pressure, and that's what I'm just trying to continue to teach my family is that I will never succumb to the um, likings of Star Wars. <laughs> and that's so how that's going to be? Why should I watch the movies that you recommend? Then? I didn't. Oh, because you should see them. It's not well, you should they're see realistic Wars. movies. <laughs> Star Wars is realistic too. In a galaxy far, far away, it's realistic. Yeah. Yeah. Do you not like do you not like any movies that aren't grounded in reality? Yeah, I think so maybe so you just said you like Toy Story. That's not reality. Toys can't talk. I mean that's that's very Lion King's not real. Animals can't talk. But they're animated. It's an animated one. Well, it's not real. But it's animated, so it, that's an obvious. But I'm sorry, so like Avatar, not a fan. Well, okay. Didn't like I it. didn't like Avatar either because it's literally just Pocahontas oh. in space. Like the plot, literally scene for scene, is like is it identical? It's a, it's a I've never watched it. You never watched it? Okay. Yeah. Well, it's got blue people on the front cover, so I'm like, no, not watching. So it's a native tribe that lives on this planet that's all forested. They get invaded by these humans with mm-hmm. like advanced technology and then the human goes to infiltrate the native tribe ends up falling in love with one of the natives that is and fights pocahontas. back against the humans it's literally pocahontas <laughs> in space hey comment if you think it's like pocahontas i want to that because i've never seen it no in, i saw it when it first came out the first one i haven't seen the second one and i walked out of theater i'm like this is this is james cameron just rewrote pocahontas yeah it's like it's and not you original know, you at all. know the producer or whatever they're called the director director yeah <laughs> James Sorry, Cameron, man. <laughs> he did Titanic. Okay. I didn't I don't remember the director. The Terminator? Yeah. I I know those movies. Yeah. So, you know another movie that's like unrealistic, but I think it could be realistic sometimes? Lord of the Rings. The Truman Show. The Truman Show? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's 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 unrealistic, but it's still grounded in reality. Like it yeah. has it has 
explanations for all of the... Why is it unrealistic, man? You don't think there could be somebody that's like... You just said it's unrealistic. I said, but it's kind of realistic. How, what well, is, that's what I said. It's unrealistic. Uh, it was grounded in reality so that it has, it has realistic explanations for all of the unrealistic things. You know what I mean? Yeah. What if it was like that? That's what life was it's like. It's like The Matrix. Have you seen The Matrix? I have not. Oh my gosh, Chad. <laughs> so like, I recognize the blue and red pill, the term and stuff like that. And it's Agent Smith, right? <laughs> So, yeah, never seen the Matrix, bro. Oh, never seen so the, the Matrix. Matrix. There's no way, there's no way to prove or disprove that the Matrix isn't or is real. You know what I mean? Okay. So the theory behind the Matrix is that we're all living in a computer simulation. Everything's fake. There's no way to disprove the Matrix. Okay. Unless somebody knows of it. And how many? Isn't it? It's a trilogy, right? Yeah, they just had a new one too, like last year or the year before. Oh, for real? And I didn't watch it. I heard it wasn't great is keanu in that one yeah it's like matrix resurrections or oh, something like yeah, that yeah, yeah. it's like a kind See, of like a re i think what, reboot, what, but, why i never watched that is when it came out it was like i think i was a teenager and then it was one of those ones where like i had to think too much in order to process mm, it it's really so, good but yeah i like it but it, what's it the, stands it's it stands up what's the leonardo dicaprio one the sleep one Inception? Inception. Yeah. Like, that was one that you really had to think and, and, and process. Oh, yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed too. that one, too. Yeah. So. You should watch uh, Christopher. That's Christopher Nolan. He directed that. He did Tenet is another one. It's I'm not as good as Inception, but it's also got, like, weird yeah. time stuff. So. I got you. Yeah, it's cool. Well, TV shows started back up. I'm excited about that. So, bro, have you did you ever watch Criminal Minds? No. No. Okay. I think we talked about that. Anyway. You cannot say anything about me not watching. <laughs> never seen The Matrix, never seen Star Wars, never yeah. seen Lord of the Rings. Come on. Okay. So we're, we'll have to make this pack. I'll watch one of my shows if, or movies, or watch one of your movies if you watch one of mine. Okay. Okay. Deal. I need y'all to pick a movie out for Trevor to watch. No, that I haven't seen. It. Yeah, that you haven't seen. No, you'll pick it. You pick it. Okay. Yes. And then we'll talk about it. It'll be yeah. like a book report, but a movie Yeah, exactly. Report. Exactly. All right. I'll get some AR points for it. Speaking of reports, I got a lot more work I still got to go do. Yep. So, um, and prepare for this meeting. Yes. So we got we, a lot to we, do this week. Stay tuned. Um, you follow us on Facebook if you're not, and Twitter, because yeah. you can get all of the latest updates from our department and submit your Speaking questions. Speaking of update, I want to give an update real quick because we get a lot of comments um, on Facebook about, and, and, and I'm going to, and we, I think we've said it before, but why can't we block people? There's specific people that comment all the time, yeah. and uh, individuals are always commenting, why haven't we blocked that and calling us out and stuff? Why can't we block people? Well, because they have a First Amendment right to free speech, yeah. and as a government entity, we cannot infringe on a person's right to free speech. Yeah. So we have to allow them to freely express themselves on our public platform. Yes. Now you know. And if we come up, and if they do... Um, utilize hate speech or things of that sort. Yeah, if it's criminal, um, they're threatening people. Well, yeah. That's different. That's then, not protected by the First Amendment. Yeah, and then so. we then we'll do something about yeah. that. Um, we also recognize that we have spam. We recognize that. Yeah, we have tried uh, to and deal we'll, with the spam. It is yeah. So it just if, pops up. if anybody got Mark's number, that can just tell us. Let them know, like, hey, we keep getting spam. Um, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Thank yeah. you. I was like, who are you talking about? <laughs> Who's like, Mark, Mark in <laughs> IT or something? Yeah. Like <laughs> so. Uh, but we do try to I believe um, people call him the Zuck. The Zuck, yeah. Okay, the but Zuck. we we do try to jump on there um, as quick as we can to to hide those comments and mm-hmm. stuff and report them as spam. It's just hard to keep up. Yeah, because like, every time we hide one, three more pop up. Yeah, so. if somebody knows how, um, let, let let us know because I still can't get people to stop calling me about my car's extended warranty. So mm-hmm. um, it's just dedicated and yep. dedication from yep. them individuals. So you got to be scam aware these days. You do. Have you to do. know what's what's true and what's not yeah and i know one thing is true is that we're going to wrap it up for the week um and then we'll be back next week for another episode man so until then peace bye